What is up everybody, it's Larry back with you. And today I wanted to talk to you guys about the new, the newly announced iOS 13 slash iPad OS. I'm gonna start recording my screen on my iPad. I'm running the iPad, the newest version of the iPad Pro, the 12.9. Uh, this is what? Generation 3, I believe, the one with no home button, the newest one. So what I have running here is iOS 13, iPad OS. Anyways, it's the beta, the very first beta. They just announced this yesterday. So it's buggy, but there's some really, really game-changing features in here. Some are just really cool and some are game changers. Um, a lot of what we've asked for for a long time is iPad Pro users, but um, so let's just start talking about it. I'm going to give you the, my top five coolest features about iPad OS. Mouse capability. So you can now connect a mouse, as you can see right here. Not a big fan of this cursor, um, but it does go away if you leave it there for a while. Another thing that's here is this button up here. I have the opacity down as far as it'll go, which is 15%, which the reason for this is because to get to this, and I'll use the mouse getting around as you can see, um, is you have to go into accessibility, uh, which is right here. Then you have to go to touch. Then you have to have assist touch on, and then you go down to pointing devices, and then that's where I connected my MX Master Mouse, uh, the Master 2S mouse. So you can configure the buttons here. So my button two opens that menu, but I can change these. Button three, I'm not sure what my button three, oh, button three is the scroll wheel pressing it. Um, button one, obviously single tap, and you can hold it and you know move it up like you were dragging your finger up. It's pretty much just like using your finger input. So anyways, but, why I'm excited about this is I've edited some videos on my iPad and I've used the pencil and everybody's like, you gotta think of the pencil as the mouse. Well, now you can think of the mouse as the mouse. Along with this input, you also have, finally, you can actually plug in an SSD uh, or a flash drive into the iPad Pro and the Files app, which has been revamped, will recognize it. So I'm gonna plug in my one terabyte Samsung T5. Now if I go over to the Files app here, you will see it right here. So these are all my files right here. Video files. Uh, do I have any pictures? These are pictures that I took. Um, that I posted some on Instagram, so I got the pictures here. Uh, will it show? Those are the final edits. I don't know if it'll show raw. Wonder what happens. Well, that's a raw file right there, and it's showing it, so that's pretty cool. So, anyways, this is awesome. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. The the file um, system. Uh, you can actually uh, share files with people. You can, uh, I mean, it, it's basically, you can actually, you have different views now. So you have column views like you do on your MacBook uh, or any really computer system. So huge improvement here. But really, like I said, the stars of the show, you can use a mouse and an SSD slash flash drive now. Awesome. Like that's, that's game changer there for the iPad. Like. I'm literally looking at my MacBook. I was texting with Tomas today and we were, and he was joking. We were joking about buying the new Mac Pro. And I'm like, dude, I just put the new iPad OS. I have mouse support, SSD, like I'm good to go. The only thing that's not working right now and I tried for Everyday Dad on Twitter asked me to check out to see if it would recognize Sony uh, video files. Uh, so I took the a7 III, did a test little 20 second snippet plugged it in and it did not recognize files. Um, 
videos from the Sony or pictures, and it didn't recognize pictures or video from my Canon either. So I think that's that's in the bug department here. I, I don't think that's an issue. I don't know about the Sony thing. I think it, it didn't recognize it from before. Um, but right now I can't get anything to recognize. I think the other, what I'll try later is probably putting them on the SSD and then trying it that way. Cause I'm also curious about Canon RAW uh, for my C200, which I'm recording on now. Maybe put that on the SSD and see if I can get that to recognize uh, in the file system and then drop it into um, LumaFusion. Taking the raw footage uh, from the SSD and, and put it into files and see if I can drop it into LumaFusion to edit. So I'll try to do that. Leave me a comment down below if you want to see a video on that. That's the that's number five. Number four is dark mode. We'll go right into settings, uh, display and brightness. Now we're here right up at the top. You can see you have the light mode, which is the normal. And I'll tell you, once you go night, once you go black, you don't go back. I mean, that's, I didn't make that up. I didn't make up the rules. It's what it is. So dark mode is just amazing. You can actually put it on automatic. So it'll go to, like at nighttime, it'll go dark. But to me, it's just dark all the time. I love it. You can see there's new wallpapers here. This one is my uh, lock screen. I'm using like this monochrome one. And then this green one here, um, I'll show you guys the new wallpapers. Uh, just for funds, funsies. Um, stills and these five here are the newest one so i like the green a little bit but you have these other i'm sorry these four this i think this sonoma these four are new versions so i love them they look like they have they may do they may like transform sort of like mac os and mojave where the night today um, I'm not sure that's I think that's what that little icon means there, but I'm I can't I can't be positive as you can see here in the settings Everything's dark. It looks fantastic. Let's look at another um, The notes app Here I have two side by side. I have pictures and this uh, we'll talk about that in a second But as you can see the note app everything's dark um, Pretty much all the Apple apps the photos like I talked about over here um, we'll talk about Photos app more in a second, but pretty much anything that could be dark mode is dark mode, dark mode all things. I love it, I love it. I, I, honestly, I don't know how anybody can not have dark mode on anything. YouTube app, everything is dark mode for me. So like every, whenever I go to something and it isn't dark mode, it's, it's jarring at this point. Three, we'll get back to what I was just talking about. Multitasking, you can use the same app for multitasking window, multiple multitasking windows. So let's just open the notes app and then we can have the other another notes app open here so now where this comes in handy is not only the notes app but like myself a lot of emails i'll be composing a new email but referencing an old email and the way i had to do that before is i would end up looking at my phone and then composing it while looking at the old one but here i can actually have one email open on this side and another email open on this side. So you can have two windows open for the same uh, application, which, you know, on a computer, that seems like a no brainer, but that's something that we have not had on the iPad Pro. So again, game changer, that's an amazing feature. Um, so like I said, even with notes, a lot of times I'll be taking, making a new note based on like an old notes. If I'm at a customer's facility for my nine to five, I'll be taking notes on my phone, like, you know, whatever, pictures, whatever. Then when I get back, I like to com compile it into like a readable format or something that I can share with other people. So this, now I can open that note on the left side and just have all my stream of conscious notes and pictures, and then actually make something a little bit more concise on the right what I've done lately is I actually share, because we have all have iPhones at work, so I actually share that note with them so they can open it right on their iPhone, see the pictures, see the format, it'll open in their notes app as well. So again, the multitasking features now on the iPad Pro with iPad OS is gonna be amazing. I mean, Apple is really taking a step into making this a standalone unit like a laptop. They've been always talking about this being a computer replacement and now they're slowly getting into that direction and I'm, I'm loving it. Okay, so number two is going to be the new home screen. As you can see here, um, we have the new widgets. Um, and here you can turn this off. 
And what this does is now, if you're familiar with the iPad, you would scroll, like swipe to your right and it would pull a whole nother screen over. So you would go over um, and then I believe, yeah, it's just like that on the iPhone. So you scroll over and then you have a whole, you know, widgets window, if you will. So now what you have is when you do scroll it over, it just compresses your main home screen and bring those bring the, brings those over. Um, there's still a little bug here. Oh, maybe I don't know if that's a bug or just to clear it, but you have this and then like I just showed you, you can edit it and you can actually leave it on the top. And that's so now here you have like here I have my uh, my calendar, weather, screen time, batteries. Um, oh, I like it show. Oh, I didn't know that it shows the MX Master 2S mouse in the, in the little batteries widgets too. So that's nice. Reminders. I don't know anybody that uses reminders, but we'll talk about that in a few minutes. Top stories, you know, all that stuff. And you can rearrange this just like you could before. This part hasn't changed. This is just like it was before, but now it's on your home screen. I actually like the look of the compressed home screen. A small thing, it's a widget on an Apple screen, which yes, you could have jailbreaked to do this years and years ago. Android's had this for millennia, but I'm an Apple user. I'm an iPad Pro user. This is a welcome, welcome addition. I'm loving it. This is this is gonna be my new home screen. It's gonna have widgets permanently on there. Okay, and last but not least, these weren't in any particular order. You could tell ones I was more excited about. And this is just the tip of the iceberg. There's a ton of stuff in this iPad OS slash iOS 13. And a lot of what I'm talking about is gonna make its way over to just the iPhone or the regular iPad. Uh, but some of these are specifically for the iPad OS, like the multitasking, you know, obviously SSD support, mouse support, things like that. Uh, the new apps. So first you have the um, podcast app, which I always found the podcast app very cumbersome. Like I could never really find anything and they made a comment about machine learning. So you can just type in a subject and it'll pop up instead of having to know the name of the podcast or something like that. So I think that's going to be awesome. And as you can see now, it's all blacked out in dark mode, reminders. So you can see this has got a whole new look and, and maybe that'll get more people using it. I do use it every once in a while and the way that I use it is I say, hey, my assistant and then say, remind me at such and such a time to do this or email this person or call this person. I'll use it for very quick things like that, um, but I don't live inside of it. But maybe with the new revamp look with iOS 13, maybe I'll give it another shot. The Photos app. So the Photos app, again, got a full refresh. Um, you have this sort of grid, multi different sizes and shapes and all this stuff. Um, and then what I really like about it is it plays the videos right inside of this. Um, another thing that's really cool is if you like long press on one, it'll give you your share, you can favorite it, you can delete it. That's a live photo, that's why it moved around. The select works the same as it always did. Cancel, oh, that's stupid little things up there. Okay, cancel. Um, and then you can do you can do all your photos. So you got a huge grid, which is more evened out. You have the days, which is what I just showed you. You have months where everything's broken into months. Uh, so June, May, and then you have years again. So you can go back to all the different years. Uh, it's just very clean, very nice. It was it's a very welcome refresh. The other one is the Apple TV. And again, one that needed a refresh bad. The old TV app in iOS 12, I could see what they were trying to do. They were just, it, was, it wasn't fully baked. And this one, it feels like it's fully baked. You have recent purchases. It's very similar to how Apple TV is set up. I'm an Apple TV user, so this is very familiar. And I like that they're sort of getting you across platform some uh, familiarity. Uh, so you have your recent purchases up here. You have TV shows, movies. I like you have a 4K HDR. I don't believe I have that on the Apple TV, but so you can watch something in 4K HDR. Um, you have ones, it shows you what's downloaded. This was very difficult to find in the other TV app, so that's a welcome. And then you have all your different uh, nonfiction, animation, comedy, all your different categories down below. You have your watch now, you can see different suggestions, uh, things that you've started watching, where you're at, and then obviously search. So again, awesome refresh, great. 
Uh, there's more that has been updated, but those are the ones that I use and that had me excited. The App Store got also a refresh, but it has an arcade area here, which says games that redefine games coming soon. So they mentioned for the arcade and they were showing Apple TV as it was up on the stage, but Tim Cook mentioned that they were going to bring controller support for the Xbox One controller and the PlayStation DualShock 4 or the PlayStation 4 DualShock controller, which as a PlayStation 4 gamer, that's a huge thing for me because when Fortnite got uh, controller support on iOS, I ran out and bought the one controller that has iOS support, wireless iOS support, and it doesn't have the, uh, on the L1 and 2 up here, you don't have the, where you can press in the, the, the stick as another button input. Um, so like crouching and stuff like that wouldn't work. So it was, it's basically unusable. So now if I can use a PlayStation 4 controller, hopefully a scuff controller, that means I can take Fortnite with me everywhere. And I think that's, that's game changer. I mean, again, it's a game changer. Uh, they just mentioned it a little bit on stage. So I'm not sure. I'm hoping that's gonna be more than just for the Apple TV. I hope it is for the iPad at least. Uh, the iPhone would be great, but the iPad is what I'm looking for. So that's where your updates are now. They live in your apps. You sort of gotta look for them. And as you can see up here, my little picture has a, has a thing on it. Does it show? Okay, it shows out here too. So it used to have like a little, on the, the lower bar, it had the, um, you know, say up, it had an update area, so. Just a little bit more buried, but that's okay. It's still, it's super clean um, and I'm loving it. So that's gonna be about it. If there's anything, any questions you guys have about the uh, iPad OS, I'm gonna leave this beta running unless it gets so bad that I can't use my iPad, but it, a lot of it's working. Um, the majority of what I need is working. So I'm gonna leave it on there and keep getting the updates. Anything cool comes out, I'll do an updated video. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll hit you back. If there's enough interest in more features and stuff like that, maybe I'll do a revisited vi video and we'll get into some more of the features that are in the new iOS or the new iPad OS. But that's going to be it for this video. If you would enjoyed it, you can hit the thumbs up. If you've yet to subscribe, you can do that down below. Leave me a comment. What's the coolest feature that I mentioned? What's the coolest feature I didn't mention? That's going to be it. Thank you guys as always for watching and I will talk to you guys in the next one.